Welcome back to our online little session. And I just wanted to go through some of the lines and tubes that we commonly see in intensive care and just break down a little bit of what you will come across on a patient. Most nurses, ED, recovery nurses or ward nurses would be fine from chest downwards because that's common kind of things you see in a patient. But a lot of them or a lot of you might feel out of your depth or a bit apprehensive about anything that is chest up and above because that's where most of our activity happens with a patient. So I'm just going to talk you through some of the lines and what the purpose are for the patient. So most probably the most important thing is their ET tube. And one of the clips we'll do later on, we'll go through exactly where the tube sits anatomically and what we're doing in terms of trying to ventilate the patient. But what you'll see is it's, a, it's clearly a tube that is set at a certain level at their teeth. Um, and in most adults, it'll be about 22 centimetres. Certainly for a man, it'll be about 22 centimetres. Um, and the aim is for that tube not to move out or in, the tube will be attached with various methods. So in this case, we've got an anchor fast, which actually keeps your tube quite secure without causing any pressure damage for the patient. And if we needed to change this, I would do that with one of the intensive care nurses. I wouldn't do it on your own. And it's certainly a two person job. Some patients you might see, we use different ties or different connection or tapes. And again, it's just because of pressure damage for these patients. So it's nice and soft and it's interchangeable bits that we can change as it gets wet or dirty. But again, if you need to change this or anything, I would do it with one of the intensive care nurses. On the tube, you will also see there's a cuff and this is basically what allow, what's allowing us to uh, positive pressure ventilate the patient. On the cuff, it will give you the size of the tube or the majority of it will give you the size of the tube or the size will be on the tube itself. The key with the cuff, it's got um, air in it. And again, it's, that's what's keeping the positive pressure going. It needs to be at a certain pressure. Um, one, you don't want the air escaping, so deflating or anything, because then you wouldn't be able to ventilate your patient. New technology and new ventilators, well, ventilators might have an automatic cuff pressure manometer that will come up on your ventilator screen. Um, but if you don't have that, majority of us use a cuff manometer pressure. And essentially all you need to do is just attach your cuff to your manometer and making sure that the pressure is somewhere in the green, which is between 20 and 30 centimetres of water. If it is too little, you might have heard some air escaping. We call it a cuff leak. We need to have it between 20 and 30 because what we don't want to do is cause any pressure damage in the larynx itself. So we tend to check this maybe four hourly throughout the course of the day but again let's just follow local guidelines. On the tube certainly for the patients that will be managing with COVID you will have inline suction and that just means it's a normal or an adapted suction catheter that's enclosed and we don't disconnect that in order to suction the patient and it, you can keep it on connected to your suction or not. There's different makes of it so it looks slightly different between units. So again, just check with the nurse who's looking after the patient to do suction together. And maybe further down the line, you might get more comfortable with doing it. But that's what you will see attached to your patient. This is just a normal suction catheter, just to clear any secretions or anything when they cough. Clearly have ventilator tubing attached to your vent. And again, the ventilators will change from unit to unit. So we all use slightly different makes like we do all across the NHS. Something else you will see if we go just on the face of the patient, your patient will have a nasogastric tube. We use fine bore feeding tubes as opposed to a Ryles tube. And again, the make might change slightly. And for patient safety reasons, majority of it is, is purple syringes so that you, can, you can't connect any IV, normal IV syringes to your NG tube. And a majority of the time it will be connected to NG feed like we would do on the ward or anything. Again, just make sure from a pressure point of view, because they're going to have this in for quite some time. We use different, most probably people use different tapes or way of sort of taping it, but that's certainly one of your pressure points is where the NG tube sits. So you just need to be careful when you check and we'll make sure we're not causing any pressure damage. The other thing that most people will come across is our patient will clearly have a lot of lines attached to it. I would say 90% of our patients will have a central line. 
and it's normally IJ, internal jugular line, and it might be left or right. We use five lumen lines, so, um, and, but you can go from one lumen to three lumens, to four lumens, to five lumens, and there's certain places that might have more than one. It just means you've got five lines that you can access in order to give patients drugs through. It's changed a lot from when I started in intensive care. When I were in intensive care, we had lots of three-way taps, and a little row of three-way taps and lines. It's much better now, and there's very few places that use three-way taps and things anymore. You will find us, we will label all our lines. It will be date and time when it was started, which guides you for, from an infection control point of view when to change the line again. And also, we will often put um, labels of the drugs that's on that line, um, just again, in an emergency, you want to be able to quickly identify which line is which um, and which drug is going through which line. Because a lot of these patients will end up on more than two or three infusions, depending on how ill they are. They will certainly have sedation, may or may not have some inotropes, may or may not have insulin um, running. So in an emergency, it's quite important to be able to quickly ac uh, access which line is which. If you're a bit OCD like me, I would straighten these lines out a bit more further, <laughs> further down the line. Um, again, it's just from a patient safety point of view, but we all have our own little quirks and things of how we manage our patient.